Hello and welcome to an FCAT special report, COVID-19, an update. My name is Chris Collins. I'm the director of Frontier Community Access Television. Once again, we are back at the Deerfield Town Hall for a second update in less than a week on the COVID-19 virus and the community's response to same. What is new is that the governor has made an announcement and will be talking to the superintendent of the Frontier and Union 38 School District, Darius Modesto, in a moment about schools being pushed off the opening to the first Monday in May. What does that mean for your local school district? Are we going back to school this year? We'll talk all about all those different things in different angles. Another part of the governor's uh, declaration this past week was that you could no longer bring non-disposable, non-perishable bags to supermarkets. So supermarkets now will no longer charge for paper bags, and I believe some of them will be offering plastic bags, again, because of the concern of the COVID-19 virus being brought in through reusable bags. A lot of communities have gone to plastic bag bans, and the governor has sort of put that on hold temporarily. We've also got a variety of other things we want to update. We've got the police chief here, John Pachorek, also Zach Smith, the director of the South County EMS. I mentioned Darius Modesto, of course, and joining us for the first time, the chair of the Board of Selectmen in the town of Deerfield, uh, Trevor McDaniel. Let's start off, though, with John Pachorek. Uh, so, John, give us an update. Where are we in terms of COVID-19? What's, what's the police department's response? Any new information you have to offer? Thanks, Chris. Welcome, everybody. Uh, right now, the police department is functioning as normal um, as we would despite COVID-19. There has been one operational change. We did go to 12-hour shifts. Uh, we are cycling our people, 12-hour 12, uh, shifts with four days on, four days off they're assigned to the same vehicle uh, that basically reduces the amount of people in and out of the vehicles it reduces the amount of turnover in the station from three shifts a day to two shifts a day again just to cut down on that exposure so they are cycling four days on four days off with two different groups one working day shift and one working the midnight shift call response wise our calls are down slightly however what we have seen an increase in is domestic calls uh, alcohol related calls and we certainly had our bit of a snowstorm where we had four car accidents directly in a row within minutes of each other. Some things to pay attention to right now is the Registry of Motor Vehicles has laxed the reinspection guidelines where uh, your inspection stickers due up in March are now due up at the end of May. If you have an inspection sticker due up in April, it is now due up by the end of June. Um, we, a week ago, saw about 328 confirmed cases in Massachusetts, and the current number as of yesterday was 1,883. And I did emphasize this last week. We do want to be cognizant that we know those numbers are going to increase. We know there's additional testing out there. Uh, we don't want to alarm people. We just literally want people in the loop so people can be educated uh, as to their decisions of you know, how and when to go out, their interactions with people with that six foot rule, uh, medication pickup, grocery stores, et cetera. Please uh, make sure you are washing your hands. Please make sure you're keeping that six foot distance. If you have questions, call us at any time. One of the other things that we uh, have seen an increase in, and uh, Trevor may want to touch base with it, is the wipes and dental floss being flushed down the toilets. It's uh, it's very problematic for us to call three to five highway workers in at 10 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning with backed up sewer pipes because people are flushing wipes right now. Mm -hmm. And very concerning to us when other houses, that sewage backs up into them and their cellars fl flood with it. So one of the things I think we do want to get out, Chris, is do not flush that stuff. Even if it says that you are able to, that does not mean you should. Do not flush the I, wipes. I could add to that. Please do, want. Trevor, because I know the head works right now have been a question already in they South Deerfield. Yes, yeah, so we're, um, we're tackling um, over a couple of year program to, to address the sewer needs um, down, at, down at our main plant. And right uh, this week has been really stressful because we, are, um, we took off the main circular clarifier so we could drain that. Um, we got back up and running the very small 50-year-old rectangular clarifiers. That's the last process before the water gets treated and goes into the river. Um, so we're running on a very small temperamental system right now. We had to drop the main one so we could get 
guys in there and measure that for the manufacturing of the new replacement clarifier, um, which takes about five months to build. So anything that's going in the system is really um, putting a stress on the operators and on, on the systems. And we're seeing reports all across the uh, country of, um, you know, because people didn't have toilet paper, you know, the to um, the uh, paper towels, wipes, all of that stuff. If you can just put it in the trash, it will help us immensely. It's very expensive, um, to, you know, to, to be doing this stuff, and it's really tough for the guys right now. So whatever you can do to put that in the trash and not down the toilet would be huge help to us all. In terms of the, the town's overall response, is there anything new to report? I know that you've had the state of emergency in effect. Mm -hmm. Is there anything new that's going on that we should make people aware of? Well, um, we really want to stress to stay home. I mean, we, we've brought the operations of the town right down to essential employees right now. Um, we have no traffic coming into, into town hall unless it's an emergency or an appointment made for signing a paperwork or something like that. Um, so it's, we really can't stress enough because the stress on our hospitals is going to be immense in the next coming you know, week or so, and it's already very, you know, really tough. Um, as, as this goes on, more and more people will get this. It's just the nature of it, and um, there's no shame in getting this thing. You, you know, please tell, um, tell your doctor if you get it. Um, most people will be okay. If you stay home, don't have contact with anybody, you'll have a flu like, like most people. But, um, but there, there are a percentage of the people with um, underlying medical conditions that it can be very, very dangerous for, and we've seen that all across the world, but um, especially hitting New York, and it's gonna make its way around. So notify your doctor uh, if you have it. Not you can notify um, EMS, if, you, if somebody's coming to the house, we wanna know, our workers wanna know, our EMS first responders wanna be able to know if you're, you know, if you're compromised anyway, so they can take good precautions when they care for you. So uh, those are the steps. So we've done a lot um, changing internal, how we operate, how people are working, but we can't stress enough to stay home if you can. Um, and I, I did notice that the doctor's offices were kind of calling in scripts. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go there and pick anything up. Even if you're on a controlled substance, you don't have to go and pick up your scripts every month. They will call that right into the doctors and you can do the drive through at CVS. So less contact with the public would be, would be the best. And we should also mention that the governor's declaration this week was not a full-blown shelter in place. Order. Correct. I think that mm -hmm. that is something that needs to be, I mean, roads are open. Certain stores are open, certain businesses are open, but the idea is to try and get people to stay home, if, if at all possible. Yeah, absolutely. We, we want that social distancing, but we still want society to be able to function day to day. So it's a step back of what China did with a full, true lockdown. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, that's extremely difficult to do because we have something called the Constitution. Yes. So yeah, we are, we're not at that level. Uh, we are trying to maintain it every way we can with the social distancing, with making thoughtful decisions about going to the grocery store, picking up your medication, keeping away from people, not stepping into you know, somebody else's vehicle, interacting with too many family members, you know, on and on and on. We're trying to keep it down as much as we can. And truly, I think the numbers are showing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the numbers are showing it. Yeah. We are seeing a little bit of a spike in the numbers, but I think that's because our testing yeah. has literally come up tenfold. Right. Yeah, yeah we know it's, here, although there is nobody in di uh, ha that has been diagnosed or confirmed in the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. There are no confirmations of Deerfield. There right. was a couple suspected. They came back negative. They were fully investigated. Uh, they were quarantined for the time being. Mm -hmm. And so far, we have yet to yield a positive test. One other question I wanted to ask you, Trevor, before mm -hmm. we go to Darius, because I want to bring sure. in Darius quickly. Um, in terms of annual town meeting, in mm -hmm. terms of, of keeping a functioning government, the select board met the other night. What is the decision, or is there a decision at this point regarding annual town meeting? Yeah, we're, we're close to a t decision on that. Typically, we have one warrant that we post that uh, calls an annual town meeting and also calls for the election the following Monday. Um, the, the thought process right now, we're working on this this week, is to maybe separate that into two warrants because the requirements from the state and the, the changes in regulations are, are going to give different times than, so you may have two different voting roles. Um, so so we're, we're looking at probably doing, um, and, and I think the governor's looking at maybe a, a absentee ballot for the election. So we're going to probably call that election and then uh, make a chance, to, we're thinking of moving those to June. 
So maybe first of June would be um, annual town meeting, you know, and that subject to change too with what's going on. Um, and then the annual election would be the following Monday, but we don't have anything set on that. But we do, we do know that it's probably cannot take place at the end of April. So we're just trying to work with the, the governor and the secretary of state through, um, through Barbara Hancock is doing an amazing job trying to keep all of this organized and straight. Um, the only town that, to my knowledge, that has postponed annual town meeting is Waitley. Sunderland hasn't made a decision, neither is Conway, but yep. everybody's going to have to take a look at it mm -hmm. depending on where this pandemic goes. And we haven't called it yet. So yeah. typically we call it to the clerk and then she does it. We just hadn't taken that step yet. Our warrant has been open. We'll be closing that warrant on Friday. We may have to open up again depending on what, what happens, but hopefully we can, we can just close that, call it, and move it out. I was As, actually hoping that we would pick a beautiful June evening and yeah. do it uh, on the stands at the football well, you know stadium what? at Frontier. That is, that Southwick that had a special right outside. outside, mm -hmm. outside and yeah. it seemed to work. And yep. Not everybody was wild about it, but it seemed to work. And, and Keeps people maybe that's safe an and not all in one room, so that'd be, that might be safer. The other takeaway from the governor's message earlier this week, of course, was the, the push out to the start of school to the first Monday in May. And joining us for the first time, on this panel is Darius Modesto, who is the superintendent of the Frontier Regional School District and Union 38. Uh, so Darius, unprecedented times, obviously, uh, obviously difficult. Uh, you run a regional school district and you run you know, four different elementary schools. Uh, so what can you tell us about the governor's decision to push the start of school off into May? And is it realistic to think that we're gonna have school the rest of this year? Uh, well, I don't know what's going to happen in May. With, you know, in fact, if we go through the re remainder of the school year, I think it's going to, as, as we're watching all the, all the graphs and such and whether or not new medicines are coming out or, in, or that kind of thing of how we're going to treat patients, I think that will be the big determining factor of when we go back. Um, when we originally called the two week before the governor did it three weeks, um, I think the real question was, well, once we call it two weeks, how do we come back? And that's going to be the big question, you know, what is going to be the uh, – the indicator to say it's you know now safe enough to return to business as normal and you know a school is business as normal bringing that many um, families together you know basically bringing the hub of the community back together um, and that kind of thing so uh, I have no idea in the sense of you know is this going to continue or not are there any types of, of remote learning F programs or how are Teachers are teachers interacting with students right now online. How does it work? So we got a, you know, Frontier Union Three got ahead of this right from the right from the start. Um, we were fortunate to have a, a professional development early release on Friday, um, in which this took place, and we canceled the the uh, activity that day and we went straight toward. We could see that, um, you know, this was coming, mm -hmm. um, and so the teachers started working together, put lessons together, and that kind of thing. So basically, we're doing, you know, uh, continuing learning activities for home for schooling at home. And so teachers are checking in with students, a lot of um, uh, the digital FaceTime and mm -hmm. sending out lessons and activities for the week under all subject areas. Um, uh, even, you know, and as what happened yesterday with the governor and the extension of it, we kind of put in this plan that was gonna get us through basically two weeks because the, the first week we took us a couple of days to roll it out. We, we did some snow days because we had some snow days where the governor said you had to go to 185, the 185th day, which I think is like June 16th or 18th. Um, and so we were like, oh, let's do some snow days where we can get this all in place. We kind of rolled it out last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. The feedback has been tremendous. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the teachers are communicating with parents and students being supportive. Yeah. Our first, you know, our first and the important thing we want to do is make, just make connections. Um, the isolation that, you know, it's not supposed to be, so it's supposed to be social distancing, not isolation. Mm -hmm. um, and some of these kids really, I mean, we're, I've heard reports from parents where, you know, in the, down in the dumps and then all of a sudden they have an online class or meeting with the teacher and um, just even mm -hmm. social interactions just kind of pick up, you know, pick up their spirits. And so that was kind of the first, the first thing we wanted to roll out to make sure that people weren't alone and families weren't alone. It's very difficult. Um, for those of you who have been it parents um, or are parents, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, to stay at home when you're not used to doing this kind of thing and, you know, and the kind of supports, you know, the teachers are giving supports and activities to do and that kind of thing and just, you know, offering that kind of support. Um, so that was kind of the first rollout. And then the next rollout was to start doing some kind of regular activity in both online and offline. A lot of people are going, going straight to e-learning. Well, we don't have the full capacity, especially what does younger e-learning look like. There's a lot of professional development that has to happen um, to be very successful at that. Um, However, you know, we can do things that are online and offline. And so that's what we're, the teachers are kind of feeling out. It's kind of a, it's a learning process. They're seeing what's working, what's not. However, 
the new the governor now extending this now till May. We now we were in. Um, they just actually just left a, a telephone conference call with all the special education teachers because we're now we're going to have to step up our game even more. And and we are far ahead of other districts in the state of Massachusetts. A lot of districts didn't really know what to do. Um, we are a little bit smaller, so we're not like a barge that we have to move kind of thing. We were able in. I got to tell you, we have fantastic staff that just Absolutely. from the beginning said, this is what our role is. We're educators. What can we do? Well, we can support students. We can support family. That's what we do. And yeah. so, we, you know, we kind of got that kind of rolled out. So we're going to be continuing that through this five weeks. There's going to be some changes at the secondary because now you start talking about, you know, after this three-week thing, you're talking about, okay, what about credits? What about graduation? What about, you know, you know, building a transcript for colleges? And that's being digested right as we speak right now. And that, that's the unfortunate part about the governor's announcement is that we kind of saw it, that an extension was coming, but we were caught off guard. So, yeah. um, you know. But do you <clears throat> not have to get the school year in before June 30th because of the fiscal year? Isn't, is Correct. That, yeah. Correct. So we, we will not be going beyond June 30th. And right now, because of contractual issues and that kind of thing, um, I mean, the school committee can extend beyond the 185th day, but the, the state is not. So, you know, um, Eastern Mass doesn't allow for these, you know, these five snow days. They don't use them as much, so they go a little bit later with the five snow days. So you had that five snow days on. You know, we usually, you know, we put five snow days on. We know we're going to buy about seven. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of really predict that maybe the seventh day gets us into the mid-20s, where Eastern Mass, their fifth snow day puts them in the mid-20s, um, you know, the high 20s. So they're really already talking about going to the end of the month. Um, so you'll hear in the press that the schools are going to the end of the month, and it actually confused us at one point because the, the commissioner said, well, school will go to the end of June. And we're like, well, how are we going to compensate? That's going to be a budget constraint because after the 185th day, how are we paying those people? No, they were. He was going off of Eastern Mass, mm -hmm. which is you know obviously well, the majority. Of and how typical is that? Of yeah, course. Mm -hmm. very good. So, in terms of DESI, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, I know that they have time and learning requirements. There are certain mandates that are in place. Are they going to give you any rhythm on that? Are they going to waive any of those? Yeah, so they're they're waving it as fast as they're they're. I mean, to give the credit, we're not the credit, but the, the credit to the situation they're in. Um, you know, they're reacting to the the, the ever changing environment. You know, the first question was, what's going to happen to MCAS? You know, and um, you know, what, what are we going to do about students who, um, you know, have to take the test in order to graduate? Um, we don't have a lot of cases of that happening, but in some some of the other other districts where um, you know they have that issue is like it's MCAS is required to graduate. Well, that's a federal mandate out of No Child Left Behind where you have to have that kind of assessment in place. So they had to appeal to the federal government to redu to you know you know mm -hmm. create a waiver not to do the MCAS testing. So I mean all these like what you think is very simple, like just say no to it is mm -hmm. is, is actually has and then how long are going to be out? And so I think you're going to see MCAS um, disappear. They're, they're already putting in the motion to do that. Um, so th those kind of requirements for graduation this year, I'm sure they'll put in some sort of um, stipulation on that. Um, you know, what are we going to do about, you know, earning credits for graduation? I mean, that's what we're kind of mm -hmm. developing right now. There's going to be, you know, it's not going to be, it's not business as usual. You can't replicate the classroom online right. um, mm -hmm. and, this, you know, and what happens in the classroom and the accountability to students. You know, it's hard to, it's hard to wrangle the kids in the classroom, let alone when they're, then they're at home. And, you know, and I, I know parents are feeling the same way. You have a, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old who may not be completely invested, the motivators, um, you know, the inter if you don't have internal motivation, the external motivation is far, it's far more difficult when you all of a sudden you're doing it. Um, we answer the yeah. phone, we answer the email, or you pick up the the mobile the mobile, you know, online uh, uh, video conference. As a school committee member, Trevor, mm -hmm. uh, you want to weigh in on some of this? I know that uh, your school committee has has your school committee had a meeting since uh, this whole thing? Not since yeah. this started. We we had approved our. Um, our budget to the town um, at just before this started, I think. So we were, um, you know, we were we were kind of done with that, and now obviously we're we're looking back at that because revenues aren't coming in. We're really concerned about revenues for next year. So I, I do foresee a you know probably a meeting we'll, we'll have to have, but we're doing them all virtually now. Um, and I, I can't commend uh, Darius's leadership enough. Him and his uh, he and his team are doing an amazing job with unprecedented challenges. Um, so we're all taking it, taking it one day at a time, really trying to figure out where we're at. And, um, you know, it, it's really concerning for, for town budget and for, um, for school budgets. We're all in a different world in, in a week's time and um, where you would, could, could count on revenue and you kind of figured, okay, I'm going to have this much uh, meals tax coming in. Well, all the restaurants are closed. Um, you know, uh, car 
you know, excise tax. Well, you know, with everybody losing mm -hmm. their job, no one's buying a car. So there, there's things that you planned on kind of having some budgets for um, and you have staff allocated for and, and you have to kind of revisit all of that really fast. And, um, and it kind of fell right in the middle of just finishing out our budget season. Fortunately, so. it won't affect funding for public access television, hopefully. <laughs> That's <laughs> what it's all This is, in, information is very important. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Darius, I want to talk about the summer, the feeding program. Mm -hmm. And the last time we were here, John, we were talking mm -hmm. about Frontier being involved in helping coordinate a feeding program for seniors. Mm -hmm. I know you're working on a thing for the, you're helping out the kids because a lot of these kids come to school, that's, they, they, that's where they get their food mm -hmm. during the day. What is uh, working, what are you working on in that front? So right out of the gate, that's what we dealt with first. Uh, you know, I immediately jumped to education, but the first thing we did was, you know, making sure kids were safe and we're um, getting the meals. So we actually reached out to every single family um, who was on free and reduced lunch to, to ask if they wanted to sign up um, for meals. We offer a lunch service and the following day breakfast. So upon delivery of the lunch, you get, you know, the lunch, the, the meal of the day, and then you also get the, uh, a breakfast for the following morning, you know, bagel, cream cheese, fruit, yep. drink, um, that kind of thing. And so, um, we rolled that out, and that is open. I just want to make sure everybody knows that is open for anybody under the age of 18 in all four of the towns. Yep. And so, if you if you, you know, if your economics have changed over the last, if people's jobs are, are, are fluctuating during this time, mm -hmm. and, and you, know, you, you have a need, just simply contact the school, and we'll get you signed up. So we, we deliver those those uh, those meals out, and they also can be picked up at the school, depending on that. Um, we're going there. We've also um, extended that out to the seniors um, yep. in the four towns, and each town is kind of is. I know they're reaching out this week. We've started already. We, we're doing 25 breakfasts um, yeah. for the town of Deerfield, and so we did. That. We started that today, actually. Um, yeah. And so those those went out um, during the. They get delivered. Everything gets delivered at lunchtime. So those yeah. at lunchtime, yeah. they'll get the, those we'll breakfasts for tomorrow have been yep. delivered. Yep. Um, we will be modifying it. We had all um, five <laughs> kitchens running in the beginning because we had food in all five kitchens <laughs> that we had to use up. We're going to start condensing that. Um, right now, we have just around a, about 100 students that are taking that are taking part. Um, in the, in the program that's far below than the amount that qualify. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that, you know, again, um, keeping it out there and, and that it, it, those people's situations change, um, we'll add those on, so. Yeah. Right. Is it kind of similar <laughs> as a summer feeding program, same idea? Any, any kid can kind of come in under the age of 18 and get, and get food? So Frontier Regional in the UN3, we don't have a summer feeding program. Oh, you don't, okay, but so we, other yeah, towns, So yeah. It, it's a very similar, where other, um, uh, towns such as Greenfield and, and Gilmontahue, I believe they they both have summer feeding programs. Yeah. They just kind of turned the light switch back. I mean, they had to work and do it, I'll make it easy. Sure. But they had the infrastructure to do that. We had to kind of rebuild this from scratch and say, what does this look like? How can we do this? And so we're you know we're we're changing it as we need to over the next. Now that we have an extended, now we're going another month in a, in a week. Um, we're gonna have to again look at the, how we're doing it. But um, you know, we are. And then right now. We have to find the money. I look over at Trevor at school committee and, and also town rep. Um, we don't get, we aren't over 50% free and reduced lunch in our district. Um, we're uh, in the you know 30, 30 to 40% range depending on what school you're in. Um, so we don't get, we, we aren't right now. We're not li lined up to get reimbursed for that, but it's the right thing to do. So yeah. um, I just kind of made the executive call out of the gate, and I know the school committee was supporting me on that. Um, we'll find a way to to pay those bills afterwards, but you know we need to keep those people those kids fed and, and support those families well we have a second to talk about um, support the last time John we talked about support for seniors and we talked about a frontier feeding program what, what is going on on the senior front to support older people who may be stuck in their homes maybe shut in uh, I know that the the senior centers had some outreach talk about that a little bit sure so the uh, the senior center and triad program do have a partnership as well with all four towns, Conway's in with us. They are reaching out to all the seniors in town. And as we did discuss last week, if you're not on their call list and you haven't got a call yet, please let us know. Please call the senior center at 665-2141 and leave them a voicemail. We do wanna hear from you. We do wanna make sure people are okay, whether yeah. they're getting their medication or whether they have food services, thanks to Darius as usual. Um, but they are reaching out to verify where people live who a next of kin is for them, a relative, if we're unable to get a hold of them, their medication needs, whether they have any allergies, who their primary care physician is, and uh, food needs. Do we need to drop off food to them? Are they able to drive? Can they get out of the house? Is there anybody else they talk to? So there's continuous outreach. And I know Waitley, Sunderland, Deerfield, and Conway, all four towns, the outreach has been amazing. Mm. My only shout out to people is, again, if you haven't got a call at this point, 
please give us a call if you have any needs. We want to make sure mm -hmm. people are attended to. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to bring in Zach Smith, the director of South County EMS. Uh, obviously, Zach, uh, this is one of those situations, as we said last time, unprecedented. Uh, how are things going with SCEMS? Are you getting a lot more calls? How are you guys responding? Thanks, Chris. Um, it is unprecedented. Uh, we are open for business. We're still responding to calls. Uh, uh, how should I, how, how should I start? Really, right? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of our, our, our big, uh, big game here. Um, we are seeing a decrease in calls, and I think that's partially due because we're doing this public outpour, asking people only to call nine one one if they have a true emergency. And right. and I said that before, and I think yeah. that goes to kind of reiterate and frame what COVID is, and that. Um, I was on the phone with the director of the Office of Emergency Medical Services uh, just this afternoon, and he really pointed out that soon, because we're, we're testing more people and it's been in the community longer, um, to quote him, he said, soon everyone will have a friend or a loved one who has the virus. Yep. And that's not to be alarmist. That's not to be scary. Mm -hmm. The point is that we should expect to see these numbers tick up, and for the vast majority of us, we, you know, we could get sick, but it won't be an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, and to reiterate what I said last time, and it still holds true, you know, if you start to feel symptoms, you reach out to your primary care. Yeah. Um, and if they're mild to even moderate, they'll probably tell you just to stay home and uh, drink lots of fluids and, and wash your hands and, and things like that. Uh, I, you know, the, we are also members of the community at South County EMS. Um, so we are also practicing all these things that we are preaching, right? So we're washing our hands. And, and we have a couple people right now that um, do not have symptoms, but that are concerned that because they have a loved one who is sick, that they don't want to transfer to the community. So just like how we're asking people to stay home and isolate, or not isolate, I should say, what, what's the Socially distanced. Socially distanced. Yeah, Thank right. you. Yeah. Um, we have some people from our department who are saying, well, I'm not sick, but I'm going to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we are taking those steps. Uh, and this is all to protect those people that are most at risk. So like right. I said, most people aren't going to get injured or sorry, aren't going to be very sick. Um, but we want to protect the people that could get very sick. So we're staying home. Um, and you're also going to see us now. We instituted a policy where anytime we interact with a member of the public, we are going to be wearing a face mask and we will provide a fresh face mask for the person, for the patient that we're interacting with. I wanted to ask you about equipment because we hear about equipment shortages at hospitals. How are you set for equipment? Do you have everything you need? If someone wants to make a donation sure. or to help out, can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've actually received some very generous donations from some local agencies and businesses uh, recently. I said we are stepping up that the, that mask usage, and that's our way of social distancing, right? Like, we can't stay at home, we gotta come to work. We have to be within six feet, so the next best thing we can do is to wear those masks. Yeah. Um, we, those generous donations will likely get us through, at least for the foreseeable future. We have channels through the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, um, the Department of Public Health, to restock these items, and right now there are other communities that are more dire needs. So, so they are getting those stores, and I think we're doing well now. If people have, uh, medical personal protective equipment that they don't see the need for, that they can't use, uh, they're welcome to donate it. Uh, they can bring it right to our station. Our headquarters is at 88 Greenfield Road. We ask that you don't come in the building. We have a little right. vestibule. I'll, I'll talk to you through the glass. Um, but if it's something that we have in abundance already, I can connect through with my channels and we'll make sure it goes to the other agencies in our county and in our, yeah. in our region that are in need of those. Are there any plans at this point, I, and John, you can answer this, or Zach, to set up any kind of an emergency command center or any kind of a, of a central location where people can get information or that kind of thing? Or is, is... I, So the, there are some, the state emergency operations center um, is activated right now, and mm -hmm. some of the larger communities, Greenfield, Springfield, they have their own local command centers, and that's primarily for the responders to kind of coordinate the information we have. If people have questions mm -hmm. at all, there's a couple avenues that you can go to. Um, first and foremost, I want to say, you know, know the source that you're going to. Go to the experts. Mm -hmm. um, the, for the people in Deerfield, deerfieldma.us mm -hmm. is the town website, and from there, it can redirect 
direct you to reliable sources, so the Department of Public Health, the Centers for Disease Control. There's also, uh, if you prefer to make a phone call, there's 211 in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful program. It's been around for a while. I believe the United Way is actually contracted to run it. And if you have any sort of concern, and that could be COVID related, that could be fuel assistance, that could be food, that could be anything, you yeah. can call 211 and they will point you in the correct direction for somebody who has the resources to help you. And I believe it's mass211.org. Um, also, yep. if you prefer the website. So those would be the places where I would direct people. And there's also the mass.gov website, which has information as well on COVID-19. And, yep. uh, and uh, it's really important, I think, in situations like this for people to get the information from official sources that are credible. I think one of the problems we have in a situation like this is that there is multiple websites out there dispensing information that is not accurate. Right. And, and in a situation like this, you do not want to be getting your information third hand from some no. sketchy website. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and another concern, I think, is the possibility for scammers. We've heard tell in other communities, mm -hmm. John, of people going around selling, trying to sell door to door, selling coronavirus testing kits. Mm -hmm. And there's no such thing going on Correct. anywhere no. right now from no. any official no. government no. entity. So. No, in California, the FBI just placed a subject under arrest that was uh, claimed that he had the cure to the coronavirus yep, and was getting investors out there. So they're all over the place. If you have a question, I always ask people, call us. Yeah. If you get a scam phone call, anything, give us a call. Do not mail anybody money. Never. If somebody asks you for gift cards, do not give them. Never. Always call us in advance. Yeah. Yes. So as of right now, the, the mass211.org was activated last week. As of last night, there was 17,454 calls, calls to that number. So from the emergency management perspective, Chris, we always go down through our checklist and we are very fortunate in South County to have amazing select boards, but I can't emphasize enough that Zach as the EMS chief is utterly amazing and no flattery whatsoever, but we have an amazing superintendent of schools as well. So when you look at the team in general, everybody gets along so well that mm -hmm. assets are coordinated with total ease mm -hmm. there's no personality in the mix there's you know there's never an arrogance and aura about it south county flows extremely well Absolutely. and you know that's a credit honestly to everybody but if you go to the cdc's website if you go to the who's website you will see uh, there's all kinds of different response protocols out there we are following the protocols we are looking into every active case we're investigating them we're looking at their backdrop. We are following up with the testing kits. Zach is in the loop with everything with the Department of Public Health, whether it's a positive or a negative test result. Um, we are trying to get as much word out as we can with the social distancing, with the uh, disinfecting, and just making sure that people are spending time at home with their own families. It's okay to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to go for a walk with six other families. Right, it's exactly. not okay to have you know four play dates with four different other families. Right. So, uh, you know, I do want to give a shout out to Darius because mm -hmm. I did not know that teachers were going to be calling home and my phone has been ringing every other day from Ian and Allie's teachers. Yep. And both of them have been amazing. They have been so, great. Teachers have been you great. You know, for me just to sit here and pass over the schools and not say anything, I, yeah. you know, I think would be just wrong. Yeah. So Miss Andrews and Miss Cavarini at the Deerfield Elementary School have been on the phone with my kids near every day doing online learning and they've been utterly amazing. Yeah. So I think we are in great shape. Again, I would caution people in South County, you're gonna see the numbers go up. Mm -hmm. We know they're gonna go up and it's going to be okay. Yeah. We're gonna continue to progress and our focus right now is on the healthcare system. Exactly. It's whether it can handle the volume or not. My concern right now is Franklin Medical Center, it's Bay mm -hmm. State Medical Center, it's Zach. It's yeah. not Deerfield Police Department per se. Right. I think Deerfield Police Department is in a great position. We have amazing people, we have amazing protocols set in place, we have good PPE, mm -hmm. and if not, I'll go over and steal some more from Zach, <laughs> whether he's there or not. And uh, I think we're in a good position. My, uh, my concern you know, in the long run is making sure that Zach is good and that Franklin Medical Center in Cooley and uh, Bay State Medical Center is good when we really hit that peak. Yeah, my, my major concern is, um, is we get complacent because you know, this is exciting and new for a week. Um, when you get into week two and three and four, um, 
you know, it gets really tough. It's tough for families to be home like that. So really, it, the, the whole idea is to stay separated, not, not socially, just physically. So call people, talk to your elders, talk to people that are at home alone um, that just want to have a conversation. Um, but don't get complacent because as, as long as we can stay separate, we can maybe put put a little bit slow on that uh, on that curve and and we'll be you know we'll be able to make sure the hospitals are in okay shape i think in a situation like this it it does reveal how fragile our society can be in certain areas mm -hmm. but the way people have stepped up and been very human with one another and supportive i think it shows that as a people as a society, we're stronger than we think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the people that are around this table right now are doing everything possible to make sure your towns and your, your streets stay safe and your people stay healthy and protected and that your kids are yep. continuing edu being educated online and are finding ways to continue to be engaged. This is gonna be a marathon, not a sprint, mm -hmm. but I think we got the right players in place to protect our communities. I wanna thank uh, Trevor McDaniel, Chair Thank of the you. Board of Selectmen in our Select Board, actually in the town of Deerfield. Yep. John Pachorik, Police Chief of the town of Deerfield. Zach Smith, Director of SCEMS. And of course, Darius Modesto, Superintendent of Frontier and Union 38 School Districts. I'm Chris Collins. That's an FCAT special report. We'll check back in probably next week and get you updated and continue to keep the lines of communication open and always keep it tuned to Frontier Community Access Television. And we'll do our best to keep you informed during this pandemic. Thanks for watching and have a good day.